All right, guys, last one here. So this one is a, a Y source. So this is a secondary of a transformer. We have no concern what the primary is, but this is our secondary of the transformer. Uh, and this Y source is now feeding a delta three phase resistive load. I've given you guys the resistance on the phase here. So each of these guys are a balanced load here at 18 ohms. And I've given you this voltage right here. And this voltage is going from the star point right here to an external connection. So that one is a phase voltage. So we can drop in our phase voltage here of 277 volts on the phase. And we know that on a Y, we know that the voltage on the outside is root 3 higher. So this voltage right here is going to be 480 volts. Okay, we know that because uh, our rules for the Y are that our V line is equal to V phase times root 3. And we know that I line is equal to I phase. Over here for the delta, we know that the voltages are identical on both the line and the phase. Uh, but our line current is greater than the phase current by a factor of root 3. So again, if we wanted to take a look at the 277, right? So, oops, easy now. We got 277, uh, and we're going to multiply by root 3. That gives us 479.77. So I'm going to round that up to our standard voltage of 480 volts. Excellent. So our line voltage here is 480 volts on the line. We can clearly see that that voltage goes across and is impressed right across our delta load there. So that's 480 volts coming in. And we can see that the voltage here and the voltage here is the exact same as the voltage impressed right across our resistive load. And we can see that fits with our equations here that our line voltage and our phase voltage are identical. Beautiful. Next thing we're going to do is we're now going to take uh, a three phase circuit and break it down into a single phase Ohm's law equation. So right now we have what 480 volts. So we've got this voltage here 480 volts that's impressed across that resistor. And when we're looking for the phase current, we've got 480 volts impressed across 18 ohms. And if we take 480 divided by 18, that's going to give us 26.67. Okay, and that value right there of 26.67 amps, that's going to be our phase value. You can see that that's on the inside of the delta. Okay, when that current comes into the delta, it takes two paths. It doesn't take, take them at the same time. They go 180 degree, 120 degrees out of phase. Um, but we can see that the current then disperses along these two lines here. So this line current on the outside of the delta has got to be greater. So we're going to take, for our line current, we're going to take the 26.67 amps. And we're going to multiply that by root 3. Okay, so here we've got 26.67 amps times root 3. That gives us 46.19 amps. And that's our value on the line. So the current on the outside is equal to 46.19 amps. Okay, we can clearly see that that current is coming right from here, 46.19 amps on the line. And there's only one path for that current to flow through this winding here. So the current on the phase is going to be also equal to 46.19 amps as well. So we got 46.19 amps on the line. And we can see here that based off of this equation, our phase and our line currents are identical. Beautiful. Last thing we need to do is find our power values. Right? We have one load being fed by one source here, so these guys will be identical. But we're going to again use the, the two equations to just d double check our line and our phase values. So we can find our total power by d doing V line times I line times root 3. So in that case we've got 480 volts 
times our line current to 46.19 amps, and we'll multiply that by the square root of 3. Four eighty times forty six point one nine amps on the line times the square root of three that gives us thirty eight thousand four hundred one point six four thirty eight four one point six four beautiful and would you do watts again because it's just resistive load so far okay we can also double check that with our phase values we can do v phase times i phase times 3. Uh, our phase voltage is 277 volts. Our phase current is 46.19 amps. And we're going to multiply those single phase values by 3 to get a 3 phase total VA. Okay, so what have we got there? We got 277 times our 46.19 times the square root of 3. And that gives us 22, that, what did I do? Again, I did the same thing. Good gracious, 277 times 46.19 times 3 gives us 30,383. That's better. Any decimal places? 0.89. Beautiful. Again, these guys are roughly the same, right? We've got 30,401. Here we got 30,383. They're essentially the same values, okay? This guy is feeding this three-phase resistive load. All right, guys, so you can clearly see that um, it's easy to make a mistake here, right? On the previous video, I multiplied by root 3 by mistake, and again, on this guy, I was on cruise control, and again, multiplied by root 3. But again, we can double-check our values to make sure that they are identical. So just to walk through this one more time, we had 277 volts on the phase. That was a given. We used that in order to determine our line voltage. We brought our line voltage across. We determined that the same phase voltage was there. We found our phase current. We extrapolated to the line, finding our line current. We brought that across. We found that the line current was the same on the phase. And then what we did was we found our power values using two equations, one using single phase values, one using three phase values, and essentially they are the same. All right, guys, thanks very much for your patience with these videos. The next one is going to build up. It's going to be uh, a number of uh, resistive three phase loads, and then we're going to build into uh, RL circuits three phase and then RLC circuits three phase. I hope these videos are helping and they're solidifying those Y and Delta configurations in your head. Thanks again, guys.